All right, so this is basically the first lecture, first lesson of Unit 1, Part B, which is the measurement in the metric system. Now, I always show this little video. It's really interesting because I, I get it every year. Why do we in this country use the American standard system? Why don't we use the metric system? Now, for us, it's intuitive. If I say go run a mile, you know an approximation of how much that is, right? Okay, if I say go buy me a gallon of milk, you know what a gallon is. If I say uh, how far is a foot, you can kind of get it close, right? So the point being is the rest of the living world, other than two other countries, use the metric system. So this little video is the history of, the, of measurements from basically the beginning of people. It's, I mean, it's only five minutes, but it's very interactive. It kind of talks you through of what happened and why and where we are today. And by the end of this unit, you're going to understand why the metric system is a better system of measurement than what we use in this country. And it's going to frustrate you, but guess what? There's nothing we can do. The, gal the how you buy gas, how you buy milk, how you buy food, how you measure distances and speed isn't going to change. We've just got to deal with what we deal with. But this is going to give you an insight into a little bit of the history of the metric system. In our country, Congress, to be honest with you. What does the French Revolution have to do with the time NASA accidentally crashed a $200 million orbiter into the surface of Mars? Actually, everything. That crash happened due to an error in converting between two measurement systems, U.S. customary units and their SI or metric equivalents. So what's the connection to the French Revolution? Let's explain. For the majority of recorded human history, units like the weight of a grain or the length of a hand weren't exact and varied from place to place. And different regions didn't just use varying measurements. They had completely different number systems as well. By the late Middle Ages, the Hindu-Arabic decimal system mostly replaced Roman numerals and fractions in Europe. But efforts by scholars like John Wilkins to promote standard decimal-based measures were less successful, with a quarter million different units in France alone. Did you catch what he just said there? A quarter million units in France alone around the world. So keep that in mind. Any widespread change would require massive disruption, and in 1789, that disruption came. The leaders of the French Revolution didn't just overthrow the monarchy. They sought to completely transform society according to the rational principles of the Enlightenment. When the new government took power, the Academy of Sciences convened to reform the system of measurements. Old standards based on arbitrary authority or local traditions were replaced with mathematical and natural relationships. For example, the meter, from the Greek word for measure, was defined as one ten millionth between the equator and North Pole. And the new metric system was, in the words of the Marquis de Condorcet, for all people, for all time. Standardizing measurements had political advantages for the revolutionaries as well. Nobles could no longer manipulate local units to extract more rent from commoners, while the government could collect taxes more efficiently. And switching to a new Republican calendar with 10-day weeks reduced church power by eliminating Sundays. Adoption of this new system wasn't easy. In fact, it was a bit of a mess. At first, people used new units alongside old ones, and the Republican calendar was eventually abandoned. When Napoleon Bonaparte took power, he allowed small businesses to use traditional measurements, redefined in metric terms. But the metric system remained standard for formal use, and it spread across the continent along with France's borders. While Napoleon's empire lasted eight years, its legacy endured far longer. Some European countries reverted to old measurements upon independence. Others realized the value of standardization in an age of international trade. After Portugal and the Netherlands switched to metric voluntarily, other nations followed, with colonial empires spreading the system around the world. As France's main rival, Britain had resisted revolutionary ideas and retained... You notice up there in the pink, do you recognize those units? And again, where did America originate from? 
Great Britain, France. Great Britain. So this is the point in history where they talk about how the colony issue happens. Its traditional units. But over the next two centuries, the British Empire slowly transitioned, first approving the metric system as an optional alternative before gradually making it official. However, this switch came too late for 13 former colonies that had already gained independence. The United States of America stuck with the English units of its colonial past and today remains one of only three countries which have. So look at the three people that we are partnered with here. Some remote country in Africa called Liberia, and then Myanmar. If you've ever heard of Burma, Burma, that's, it's now called Myanmar. It used to be called Burma. They've had a political revolution and literally changed the name of the country. Um, and so these are the two countries we share with. So if you ever want to travel and not have to worry about units, those are your two choices. Okay, Just, just FYI haven't fully embraced the metric system. Despite constant initiatives for metrication, many Americans consider units like feet and pounds more intuitive. And ironically, some regard the once revolutionary metric system as a symbol of global conformity. Nevertheless, the metric system is almost universally used in science and medicine, and it continues to evolve according to its original principles. For a long time, standard units were actually defined by carefully maintained physical prototypes. But thanks to improving technology and precision, these objects with limited access and unreliable longevity are now being replaced with standards based on universal constants, like the speed of light. Consistent measurements are such an integral part of our daily lives that it's hard to appreciate what a major accomplishment for humanity they've been. And just as it arose from a political revolution, the metric system remains crucial for the scientific revolutions to come. To All right, so hopefully that gives you a good, clear background of the metric system of where it started and why it started and how it started and how it's progressed over the course of time and why we as stubborn Americans haven't converted yet. Uh, I, does anyone remember Jimmy Carter as president? You probably heard his name. He was back in the early 80s. Do you know what state he's from out of curiosity? He's from Georgia. He's one of the few southern presidents. He's the only one from Georgia ever. Um, but he tried to convert the United States over to the metric system, and basically everybody set their hair on fire because they weren't used to it and freaked out, so they basically backed off of it. But I wanted to go back to this slide because we're going to watch another video in a few days uh, sometime next week. Remember when he said they, that the original units were based on physical objects? that this object is exactly one kilogram or one gram. So uh, there's a, they've actually, he, because they said they've gone to lasers and stuff, we're going to watch a video of what they're actually going to. Um, it's, so it's a pretty neat thing about this, in the bell jar thing, they talk about that and what that is and, and how it works. But it's pretty interesting that it's no longer physical objects because they explain why it's not anymore. But again, that's a good background into the metric system. Now, so why are we talking about measurements? Because in the metric system, it's a form of measuring. And so you, you have to be able to measure things. And so that's what you've heard me say significant figures, significant figures over and over and over again until you're tired of hearing them because you don't know what they are. But today, I'm going to give you a small uh, glimpse of them. Even though we're not going to be able to define them specifically today, it's a little bit of what it is. So what digits are significant when recording measurements? What's another word for significant? Important. Important. Okay. And again, the other word that I always use here is which ones matter. Okay. How many of you have ever thought when you're punching in numbers in a calculator, boom, this 18 decimal number pops up? And you ask yourself, when do I stop writing? Where do I round? Right? You probably ask, itself, ask yourself that consistently. There is a right answer. You've just never been taught that right answer. And that's what this unit of significant figures and measurements is about, is I'm going to teach you where to actually round to. That's what significant means. Okay? So scientists do a lot of measuring. When scientists use an instrument, such as a ruler, graduated cylinder, circle that word right there, a spectrophotometer. Okay? Here's what this measures, and we're going to get to this in a few units. Light. 
Okay, it actually measures light. And I know that sounds crazy, but there is a way to do that. Or a balance to measure something it is important to take full advantage of the instrument itself. However, you cannot cheat and record a better measurement than the instrument is capable of. You can only do exactly what the instrument will allow you to do. There is an understanding among scientists of the proper way to record valid measurements from any instrument. When you're the scientist, you have to record it that way. And when you're reading other scientists' work, you expect them to also record it properly. So that's why we have to know what measurements are. So this little pogle gave you an example of using a ruler. If I handed you that ruler and said measure the width of your desk, is that a good ruler to use? No, not at all, right? You agree that there's a lot of room for error and different estimated values in this? So, question one, what distances can you be certain of on that ruler? Zero, zero and ten. If you don't have zero down, include that, please. Can you know exactly where the zero is? Yes. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't know where ten was. Okay, it has to be a specific measurement. So, number two, six students used the ruler model one to measure the length of a metal strip, which is what that little gray bar is. Their measurements are shown at the right. Here's the question. Were all of the students able to agree on a single value for any digit in this measurement? No, they weren't. Yes. Did I not give you this yesterday? This was the one that you should have got after the test. Yes, this is the rule. Okay. So, simple answer, no. And how can you tell? All of those are different. Every single one of them are different. None of them have the exact same values in the exact same place. Okay? So number three. In the ruler model in uh, one, it's not very useful, but a measurement can be, this sounds silly, but you guys are going to hear me use this word. What is a guesstimate? It's a guess and an estimate, right? It's the mix between the two. So you can guesstimate whatever you want the value to be. So let's be honest. Let's go back and look. So let's talk about Susan, Maya, Jonah, Tony, Emily, and Dion. There's no right or wrong answer. This is an honest, genuine question, and you get to pick. How many of you would have agreed with Susan and wrote three centimeters down? Again, no right or wrong answer. I'm genuinely asking who you agree with. All right. Who would agree with Maya? Two centimeters. All right. What about Jonah? Two and a half. Tony, 3.00. Emily, 3 and a quarter. And then Dion, 3.33. So of those measurements that are written, there's this is a trick question. Which one, which which person had the most precise measurement based on the value listed? Dion. It's a trick question. There's three people. Tony, Emily, and Dion all have the same precision in their measurement. Do you agree it's all to the hundredth place? Right? Okay. Because point zero zero, and then what is one quarter? Point two five, and then point three three. So they're all to the hundred. So they're all different, but they're all the same precision in terms of accuracy. Okay? Number three, um, the ruler model one, not very useful. Discuss in your group how students might have divided the ruler by I in order to get the measurement they recorded. So let's be honest. How would you approach this? All right, so I'd say right, here to here, all right, that's about half. And then we know, then if you half it again, I'd say roughly right there. So what value is that exactly? If a, excuse me, what guesstimate is that value? That's two and a half, right? So you know it's got to be more than two. It's got to be more than two and a half. So who can you really knock off at this point? Maya and Jonah are both, they're wrong. Okay. Now again, you can't really tell them they're, they're super wrong because again, this is their guesstimate. That's, they kind of eyeballed it and tried to figure it out. But if you really try to pay close, close attention, you can roughly guesstimate three's a push, right? Okay. Because you can kind of come back in. So I would say somewhere between two and a half and three almost. So again, that's just me speaking out loud. All right, so now let's go to the next one. So this is question four. Is this ruler more or less accurate? More. 
what did they do to make it more accurate? They added the ones place, right? Because it was in by tens and now it's by ones. So the student obtained this row. What distances can you be certain of on this one? Uh, zero, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or you can write zero through ten. You can be precise of all of those values. Anything in between is a guesstimate, right? Okay. Now, were the students able to agree on a single value this time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What value was it? The ones place, which was a value of three. And the way you know that is because they know this was one. Let's try that again. This was one, this was two, this was three, and that was four. So you know it's at least a value of three, right? Then all of these numbers are just varying guesses. Okay, that's that guesstimate part that comes into play. Who is obviously wrong in their answer choice? Why is Tony obviously wrong? It goes a little bit beyond three, so it can't be exactly three. All right. Number six, what feature made it possible for the students to agree on the value? The marking of each centimeter. The, that, I love how you just said that. The marking of each centimeter. So you can say the ones place value. So each each one uh, one centimeter markings uh, were added to the, to the thing. Now, this is the first time we've really done a pogle, I think, uh, on the board. So I want to point this out. What is that? key. What does a key mean in theory? It's really important. Okay, So this right here is important for us to understand. There will always be uncertainty in any measurement because it, it's almost impossible for it to be precisely precise. Now, that's a weird way to say that. Okay, This causes variations in measurements. So if I all handed you a ruler and I handed you a book and I said measure this, is it possible everyone would have a small fractional difference? That's the variation. Okay. Compare the variation of the measurements made by the six students in the ruler, which resulted in greater variation. Explain why the ruler caused more variation. Well, because you had more options, right? It could be broken down into smaller increments. So that's why you have more options there. Okay? Now, ruler C, is it the best or the worst of what you've been given so far? The best. The best, very good. Okay? So now, were the students able to agree on a single value for any of the digits? Yes. More than, was it one or more than one? one, one. So it was the ones place and what? One, one. The tens place. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Did you ever have this sheet? Does anybody else not have this sheet? If we're ever working on something and y'all don't have some, please let me know. Don't just sit there. So again, the ones in the tens place. B, what feature of the ruler made it possible for the students to agree on the value of those digits? Love that. So make sure it's somehow right here in, in question uh, 8. Somewhere right here. You want to mention something about the 0 0.1 um, marking. Okay, the tenth centimeter marking. That's the important part about all this. Okay. Moving on. So when humans use measuring instruments of variation is expected. Everyone will estimate differently between marks on instruments. On the other hand, digits are certain based on the marks of instrument. Should not vary from person, person to person. So going up here and looking at all three of these, what they're basically asking you is, can you obviously tell um, between the valid and the invalid measurements of why some are valid and why some are not valid? Okay. So looking at ruler A, valid measurements are only 3 and 2. Why are those the only accepted values? Are 3 and 2 guesses? You can't guess beyond what you already don't know. You're already guessing with 3 and 2, so you can't keep going. Look at uh, ruler B. You know, everybody knows it's at least 3, right? But is 2, 1, and 3 all guesses? Are all of these values right here guesses? All right, so you can only guess how many times? Only guess once. Because everyone knows it's 3, right? Okay. Now, down here, you know it's at least 3. You know it's at least 3.2. But then what about these very last values? They're still guesses. 
Again, so the point being is this. Are you allowed to guesstimate a number? Yes. When should you guess in measurements? At the very end, right? So you know, you write down the values that you are sure of and then go one more number. That's the important part. So write down the numbers you are sure of and go one more number. So what they wanted you to do is, is uh, draw a square around the certain digits which, would there be any squares in ruler A? No, because none of them are certain. And then circle any that were estimates. So what would you do in ruler A with the 3 and the 2? Those should be circled. All right, looking at ruler B, are any of those certain values that you could square? The 3s, okay? So these right here would be your squares. And then we've already said it, but what about the 1s the, the place, or the 10s place? Those are all circles. Okay? So now that we know that, let's read and circle the answers to question 10. And this, put a big, huge star beside this one. This is what we're fixing to get into. These next three answers are going to determine how you are able to do um, the next worksheet. So in model four, circle the best phrase to put In a valid measurement, you record zero, one, or two estimated digits. One. Just one. In a valid measurement, the estimated digit is the first digit, the second to last, or the last digit. Last it digit. is the last digit. In a valid measurement, the estimated digit corresponds to the largest marks, the smallest marks, or one-tenth of the smallest marks. Very good. This is the most important question on this entire page. Is Number one, you understand that you do guesstimate. Number two, you, get, you understand that you only guesstimate one value. Then you understand that you estimate it at the very end, and it's a tenth of whatever you already know. So you're just moving the decimal places one place. Okay? All right, we're going to skip 12 through 14 and go down to this one. So I'm going to do this one, and there's another one I want to show you. So what is each little tick mark a value of? It's, each little tick mark is a value of what? So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Does everyone agree that it's at least 7? Are there any other markings up there that allow you to be more specific than that? So my next value has to be a guesstimate. Okay. Now, is there allowed variation in your guesses? Absolutely. So how many of you put 7.0? Did anybody put 7.1? Is that acceptable even if you did? Yes, because it's your choice. Now, if you put 7.9, is that a reasonable guess? No. So, yes, you are allowed to guess, but there is a, there is a certain reasonability that you must guess within. Is even 7.5 stretching, stretching, right? Anything beyond 7.2, you're kind of getting out of, the, out, of the, out of the zone there. The last and final thing is the number is great, the number is cool but you must always have a what at the end. Not a measurement. A unit. What unit is this? How do you know? It's literally right there. Okay? But this is also a measurement, so this is CM. Now, this is not on your paper, but just look up here on the board, and I may have to blow it up so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay? Give me just a second. Let me blow it up. Again, please don't say this out loud. I want everyone to have a chance to actually look at it. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that is 7. Okay. So see if you can figure out exactly what that is. I know it's kind of hard. The angles and the helps and how, whatever, is there a tens place value in this? There's not a tens place. Is there a ones place? What's the ones place? Seven. Okay. Is there a tenths place value? Yes. All those little tick marks are tenths place. So what tenths place is it? Should be zero. It's zero. Now you guesstimate one more number. I'm going to 
to go with you just because you said it. But would you be wrong if you said 7.00? No. No, you're within a reasonable guesstimate. So 7.01 is perfectly acceptable. Everybody okay with this? Mm -hmm. Now, the point being here is this. How many tick marks are between the 2 and the 3? Be careful how you answer that. Between the 2 and the 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, to get from 2 to 3, do you agree there are 10 total tick marks? Is that easy? Yes, because every little mark is a, is a 10. Do you agree with that? Here's where it gets complicated. This is centimeter. Is meter the metric system or the American standard? It's the metric system. Does the United States use this system? No. Everyone know what? Um, for everyone to, to know. So, last little point. So, like 9 sixteenths, that's a strange value, right? Okay? Just like 5 eighths is a strange value. And then if I ask you to add those two things together, now you've got compound fractions, and that just, mm -hmm, you can flush that down the toilet, right? Okay? That's, but that's the system that we have to use. All right, so if you guys will get, that's the wrong sheet. Let's try this one. This is the one I want. Okay. So what is the proper name of this little tool? Did I give you one of these? I was doing the test. Okay. It's a triple beam balance. Where do you see these in real life? The doctor's office. Now, I had someone ask me earlier, and it was a great question, why do doctor's offices still use these? Because, you know, scales have gone digital. Accuracy is, is a tough word to use, and here's why. It's more about calibration. Is it possible for your digital balance to, be, to not be calibrated properly? Okay. But how are these calibrated? But what... But what's what's balancing? The weight, the weight. It's a physical object that's counterbalancing your weight. So when you step on it, you've tipped the scale. Well, they're moving physical weights, right? Can weights become uncalibrated? Well, over time, but digital can instantly become uncalibrated, right? So that's why they still use these in some cases. Now, we're not ever going to use these just because of speed and time and accuracy. So what you said, Colin Wright, yes, digital is accurate, but this is kind of old school technology that just still works, if that makes sense. Okay. So let's talk about how we would actually record this. So there are four different values that are represented here, and we need to figure out how to read them all. So my first question to you is, is there a hundreds value in this weight? No. no. And how you can tell is this big thingy-majigger, yes, that's a perfect scientific word, thingy-majigger, is at the zero mark, right? So we know there's not a hundreds. Is there a tens place value? What is it? 40. 40. Very good. Is there a ones place value? Seven. Now, this is important. These, these numbers, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or, oh, sorry, I'm giving you an answer. Zero. What exact measurements are those representing? Uh, tenth the tenth place. Tenth place. T-H-S. Now, is there a more accurate measurement than even the tenths place? Yes. What is it? There's also the hundredths place as well. So, what is going to be our tenths place value? Five. Point five. Now, can we be more precise than that based on an actual measurement? We sure can. Now we got the hundredths place. What is the hundredths place value? Okay, we know this exactly too. Hold that thought. Now, how many of you would stop right there? Please don't. And here's why. The last last sheet I did, I asked you, I said put a big star beside it. What do you always do at the very end? You, mm, not yet. You guesstimate one additional value beyond which you can read. One value. The very end, one tenth smaller. 
So now, this is when you get to pick, within reason, what you might think. Now, I get it's really small, it's really tiny. So, you kind of have to go. So, in my opinion, this is my guesstimate, yours can be different. It looks to me like it's exactly on the two for the hundreds place, so I'm just going to put a zero. If you want to put a one or a two, by all means. Okay? Could you even possibly put .519 if you wanted to? You absolutely could. But in my opinion, it still looks like it's exactly even. Now, Gabriel, I think you asked this question. This is important. One more time. What device is this? A triple beam balance. What is a triple beam balance measure? Not the unit. What is it measure? Mass. Measures mass. And what is the unit for mass? Grams. Now, even if you didn't know that, Colin, you just said it. How would you know? It says grams there and there. Okay? All right. So now you guys see if you can figure out the second Don't say it out loud. Give everybody a chance to think through it and look at it. But the exact same process is applied here. Is there a hundreds place in this value? Yes. What is it? One hundred. Okay. Is there a uh, tens place? It's twenty. That's okay. That's okay. It's twenty. Two and twenty are the same thing. Is there a ones place? What is it? Nine. Okay. Is there a tenth place? It's zero. It is zero a number? Zero is a number. Is there a hundreds place value? Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, tenths, hundreds. Is there hundreds? Yes. Now this is kind of hard to see. So that's point. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven is what I got. Okay. I know that for sure. I know that that is an accurate number. And then what do you always add at the very end? A guesstimate value. Okay. Now you can say zero. I heard a two. My personal guess, I'm going to go back again with zero, simply because it looks like that little point's right there on that line. And then what's your unit, Lily? Grams. Very good. All right. So, again, you always measure to where you know exactly what it is, and then add one more digit. Okay? All right. So, let's go to the next one. What device is this? This is a ruler. Now, I'm going to ask very specific questions here. What does a ruler measure? Not units. What does it measure? Length or distance. Those are both acceptable. Here's the important question. Is this an American ruler or a metric ruler? How can you tell? The key to that is how many ticks are between each value. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, there's still called rulers and metric. Yes. Okay. They're still called rulers and metric. Just like a scale. Just like a scale. When you go home and you get on a scale, what does it tell you your weight in? Pounds. But there are grams as well. Same thing. So there's metric and there's standard. So I want you to put somewhere on this that this is a metric ruler. And however, there are, if you want to say there's 10 places between each number, or um, if you want to say there's nine ticks between each number, but that's important. Because if there were 15 ticks, <coughs> that would be an American rule, right? Okay. Just down there beside it, anywhere you want to write that. But this is a metric ruler. And here's why it's important. Because can you use decimals now? 
If it weren't, you'd have to use fractions, and you'd have to count out the sixteenths and reduce if you can. But this is why, are you starting to understand why metrics a little better now? Now, what is this exactly? This is a meter stick. And the reason I know that this is a meter stick is because it goes to exactly 100 centimeters. How many inches are in a yard stick? So 36 is right here. Where this, this finger to this finger. So this is a little more than a yardstick. So could you still use this as a yardstick? Yes, but you just have to take off the last little bit. So it's it's technically low, but it is by definition a meter stick because if you use it in the end. Somebody last block asked me, do they make things bigger than this? Now, the next step up is a deca meter. And how many meters would a deca meter be? They'd be ten of these. Now, do they make things that are ten of these? I don't think so. Trick question. Do they? Yeah. Wait, um, uh, they roll up, right? So it's kind of a trick question. They do make them, but they don't make them like all the way out. They're they're pulled. So they there are some that I mean they can stretch from here to here. They make really, really long ones that are like football size. And if y'all ever watch construction guys, there's just a little handle with a wheel on it and they're rolling it. It's a digital measuring and it can be endless. You can walk from here to Troy and the thing will measure. Okay? So it's just a digital this is a digital thing. Yeah, I had a laser measure here, like a level, so you could put it anywhere on the wall and shoot a laser around the wall, so everything was perfectly level around the wall. Uh -huh. Like those people that make some underwater zoom, they had they use one of those. They can do this. Yeah, I don't know what it was called. Okay. So let's. I'm gonna do so I'm going to do two of these, and then I'm going to turn you loose and let you do the rest of them. So let's do A and B together. So A is right here. So my first, oh, I messed this up. First question is, is there a tens value? What is it? A tens value. One. One. Is one. Very good. And again, this is just learning how to, to, to know the values. Is there a ones value? Yeah. What is it? Two. Two. Is everybody cool with 12 so far? Okay. Is there a tenths value that's precise? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Uh, Five. Listen to the question. Is there a hundredths value that is precise? No. no. So now I can't make me any more precise. So what do you add at the very end? Yes. A guess. Yes. Now, I am going to do this. I'm going to say it's one. You don't have to. You can say it's zero. That's your prerogative. That's your right. Now, the last question is, we've got all of our precise measurements. We've got our guesstimate measurement. And the third thing and the final thing is always a unit. What unit would this be? Centimeters. Very good. Okay. All right, so that's A. Now I'm going to do B in blue. Is there a tens unit? What is it? One. Is there a one unit? Yes. It's one. What is the tenths unit? Three. Three. Can I be any more precise than that? Um, now I'll guess. Now I'm going to look at that one. I'll be honest. I think that one is on the line, so I'm going to say zero on that one. But if you don't think it is, could you say point eleven point two nine? No. Are you sure? Sure you could. If you don't think it's quite. If you don't, yeah. If you don't think it quite made it to the um, the three, you can say two nine. But could you say eleven point three nine? That doesn't make sense. That's not reasonable. Okay. And again, final unit is semi. So you guys do C through. Is it I or J? And then what we're gonna do is, uh, Brianna, we're gonna start with you. Just know you've got C, and we're gonna work our way, snake our way through the room, and everybody's gonna get a chance. Okay. <laughs> Started? Alright, so Brianna, what did you get for C? I got 13.26. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? If you put uh, 0 0.25, is that still appropriate? Absolutely. Okay. But 13.2 is for sure. The 6 is the guess. Very good. Okay. Um, Anthony, what about D? 13.95. Beautiful. Okay. We know it's 13. We know it's 0.9. And then could you say 0.4 or 9.94? Is that still appropriate? Sure. If you said 0.91, is that appropriate? No. Okay. All right, Jacob R., what about uh, is it E? 
Okay, beautiful. Okay, 10.30. Could you say 0.31? Sure. Could you say 0.29? Absolutely. Okay, very good. All right, Caroline, F. Very good. Did anybody just do 12.0? That's fine. Both of those are acceptable. Okay, 12.00 and 12.0 are both acceptable. Joan, I'm going to skip you and come down to Oscar. Oscar, whatever the next one is. Wait, what letter first? Sorry. G. G, thank you. All right, go ahead. G. Very good. Let me ask you, how did you know it was 9? I don't see 9 anywhere up there. Perfect. Again, I'm asking that as a silly question, but it's kind of just want to make sure. So it has to come before 10, which is 9, and then you said that's 0 .9, 0 .8, 0 .7. And I like how you said 0 .71, because do you all agree that that arrow is a little bit beyond the, the line? So if you said 0 .70, you're not totally wrong, but I would guess different, and that's okay. All right, uh, Jacob N., H? Take it. Okay, 12.97. Like it. Okay. All right, uh, Colin? 14.36. Okay, what number is that? I? Okay. 14.3, we know, and then 0.6 is okay. I might have said 0.4, and it looks a little bit closer to the other end to me, but that's perfectly fine. And then last but not least, J. Karen, please. Okay. 11.72. Anybody put 7-1? That's okay. Very good. All right. Flip it over. All right. What device is this? A graduated cylinder. Could it also be a burette? It could be a burette. Remember, a burette's just a little bit taller, a little bit skinnier, a little bit more partitions on it. Okay? It could be a burette. What does it measure specifically? Not unit, but what do these things measure? Volume. What kind of volume? Liquid volume. Okay? I know it says graduated cylinders, but I'm just kind of adding some depth to that. So this is a liquid volume. The other thing I want to ask you is this. So follow the colors. When you're measuring in a graduated cylinder, do you measure the red line? Do you measure the orange line or do you measure the blue line? Blue. blue. That's very important. What do we call that part of the bow? The meniscus. The meniscus. M E N I S C U S. Men is cuss. Now, um, the second component, I'm going to be honest with you. When you start to do these, please be very careful. Make sure you know exactly what each tick mark is. Some of these are values of ones. Some of them are .5s. So be careful when you begin measuring them. You know exactly what each tick mark is. Um, and so I'm going to do the first one with you guys. So just looking at it, okay. So there's nine tick marks between 60 and 70. So what does each tick mark represent? One. So that's 61, 62, 63. So I know it's at least 60. I know it's at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I know it's at least 67 point something. Do I have anything to be more accurate than that? So now I guess. I'm going to give it a guess and just be odd and call it four. You could say five. You could say six. You could say whatever. I'm just going to say 67.4. Now, I've got my precise number. I've got my guesstimate number. And what's my very youth last name? What unit would these be in? Very good. M, L. Yes, sir. Gabriel? You good? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now you guys do B through J. And we're going to continue snaking on. Emily, you're going to go first when we do this next, okay? So, Emily, you'll have B. I got it. All right, so let's go ahead and start going through these. So, this is B. Gabriel. So, you know that the bottom is 30. You know that the top is 35. So, if you say, okay, well, each tick mark is one. If you just start there and say, okay, all right. Well, then that's 31, 32, 33, 34. Uh-oh. I've got too many. So that can't be right. So the next logical thing to do is say each line is a half. Okay? All right. So if that's 30.5 and that's 31 and that's 31.5 and that's 32 and that's 33 and that's 34, basically skipping one, then that, that lines up. So each one is at least a half. Okay? Now... What is the tens place, or yeah, the tens place in this number? Three. It's definitely a three. We'll write it down here. 
What's the ones place? Two. Definitely a two. Now, you know that to be the end all be all. Okay, that's the accurate point. And now we know that this is 32.5. So is it more than 0 0.0 but less than 0.5, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with 0.1. If you said 0.2, then that's reasonable. Really, anything outside of 1 and 2 is not quite reasonable. Does everyone understand why that's 32? We all good with that? Okay. All right, looking at the next one. Okay, so right, this is 75, that's 80. So 76, 77, 78, 79. Well, that checks off. They're all 1s. Okay. So what is the 10s place? 80. What's the 1s place? 1. One. And now I can't get any more accurate than that, so I have to guess the last value. Zero. zero. I'm going to go with zero. Could you say 80.9? Yeah. You absolutely could, and you would be and you would be fair to say that. But 81.0 seems reasonable, and then the unit there is milliliters. Okay. All right. So now we're going to start with what we were doing a second a second ago. Jacob, since you or, uh, yeah, Jacob, B, since you get back, we're going to start with you. Let me back this out so everybody can see it. Jacob P. Oh, okay. So what did you get for D, Jacob P? 47.6. Okay. 47.6. Very good. All right. So that's 46. Let's try this again. That's 46. Uh, that's 47. That's 47.5. So you can say 47.6 or 0.7, whichever, wherever you fall on that. Okay. All right. Uh, Emily, what about E? Okay. What is each tick mark in this one? Okay. So, it's point two. so that's two and that's three. So, so that's point, sorry, point two, point four, point eight, oh, point six, I mean, and then point eight. Very good. So, Emily, what is the, what is the ones place? Two? What is the tenths place? That's a, sorry, that's a six. That's six. And then what's your guesstimate value? We'll go. Did you at least get two? Did you at least get point six? Okay, that's fair. Ooh, you know, actually, that's. Yeah, that's actually more accurate. So it's an argument. I'm, I'm glad you said that. It's actually an argument between 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.7. Um, it's actually 0. 0.7. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 0. 0.7. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two. That's why you shouldn't do it in pen. I've got hundreds of pencils if you ever need one. So 2.7, thank you. And again, sometimes I kind of get off track and, and mess, mess these up too. Okay. All right, Gavin, you're next. Say it again. Okay. All right, if that's six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So you said 64.0, correct? Perfect. Very good. All right. Uh, Jamia, what about you? What about G? What's wrong? What I do? Okay, all right. Jamia, sorry. All right. So if this is 0. 0.5 and that's if that's 30.5 and that's 31, we definitely know it's at least 30.5, but it's between 0. 0.5 and 31. So it's, I would say 30.7. Okay, 30.7. Okay. All right, Gabriel, H. 84.2 milliliters. Okay, all right, so let's see. All right, so each line is by 0 0.2, so that's 80. No, 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 no. That's 81, that's 82, 83, 84. Right, so we know it's at least 84, and then you can guesstimate. So 84.2, perfectly acceptable. Okay. All right, Lily, what you got? I. Hang on, hang on. Go ahead, Jacob. Never mind. Lily, I. Say it again. 
Okay, 49.7. Very, very good. Because it's right above 49.5, so it's between 49.5 and 50, so 49.7 is appropriate there. All right, the last one, uh, Mackenzie. And the reason why is because that right there is uh, 3.2. So it's between 3.1 and 3.2. All right, last thing is the temperature. Now, this is important, and listen to the questions that I ask you. What are the three, the three units of temperature? Kelvin, Kelvin, Kelvin Celsius, 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 and Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Now, the American temperature is Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. So we will not use Fahrenheit in this class. But I want to ask this question very emphatically because I want to see how much you can how much you retain and recall. A, C, and E. Don't write anything down. I'm just asking this verbally. Of all three units, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin, which one of the three can A, C, or E not be at all? Kelvin. Why can it not be it's Kelvin? Way too, it's way too high of a number. Kelvin can never be negative. Remember, absolute zero is the bottom. So I just wanted to point this out that if what we don't know what the units are, but we know that it's those are the three possible ones. But we know for a fact that A, C, and D can never be Kelvin. But for this worksheet, we're going to use Celsius for all of them. Okay. So same rules apply. Figure out what the number is, go with what you know, and then guesstimate one final value. So see if you can do all of this five of these. Yes, use Celsius. All six, sorry. All right, so again, the negative ones are a little tricky, so, so be careful with those. Katarina, what did you get for A? Okay, negative. All right, so let's start. So if this is zero, this is, let me try this again. This is negative one, try color you can see. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Has it quite made it to negative three yet? Yeah. Is it past negative three? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is past negative three. But it's backwards. It's not past is it is it below negative three? It's above negative three. But it's, but it's going backwards. So it's negative 2. And I'm going to say 2.4. 5 is fine. That's within reason. It has hit the 2. It's past the 2. Negative ones are tough. Yeah. It's backwards. Okay. All right. Um, Gina, what about B? Okay. All right. So we've got 37 for sure. All right. And we know this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So now 37.9. Okay. All right. Say again. 38.9. No. no. And the reason why is because we know that this is 0 0.8, and so we're guesstimating that last value. So that would be more wrong than it is. Yeah. You probably No, I mean, I'm going to give you plus or minus one digit. All right, Antonio, what about C? Okay. All right, so this is uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. Very good. So 8.8. Two. That's a guess. All right, Ryan, what about D? All right, so that's 81, 85, 86. So we know it's definitely 86. And what was your uh, decimal? Perfect. We'll take it. I may would say 0.4, but that's okay. You have the right to say that. All right, here's a tough one, Brianna. You get a negative one. It's back to you. It's, it's back to you. What kind of 10.4? Negative 
10.4 degrees Celsius. Forgot to put degrees Celsius on the previous ones. I apologize. Okay. And then Anthony, what about F, the last one? 34.5. Perfect. I'll take it. 34.5 degrees Celsius. So now you've done four different tools, four different types of measurements with four different units learning how to be precise. So this is physical measurements. When we actually get into calculations, that's part two of the significant figures. This is measurements, it's physical, and then calculations has a little bit different set of rules, and we'll get to that next week. Say again? Two parts in unit one. Two parts in unit one. So it's part A and part B. Keep that. Keep, every, keep everything. I don't need anything. So hopefully you feel better about measurements. I just, I never